Hi, this is Noah Cantor with Advice from Young Tradesman TV, and today's video is going to be a breakdown of my chemical pump for soft washing. This is a popular demand video. A lot of people have asked me how to make this. I've sent along just like item lists that are useless, so now we're gonna go along with the video, tell you the items, how they connect, so you can build this yourself for a couple hundred bucks and maybe two hours, two hours of your time. So. Before I get into that, I want to thank the PCA, the Painting Contractors of Association, believes in educating painters through other painters like me, so they are underwriting videos like this. This video, in addition to being hosted on YouTube through my channel, is also hosted on the PCA's Overdrive platform, which is basically like the Netflix of the painting trades. It includes stuff like this, it includes super high-level business stuff, they also have trades best practice series apprenticeship teaching videos, and a expo in uh, February 2022. So if this video comes out before that and you're a paint contractor or a forward-thinking paint contractor that likes stuff like this, check them out, please. Anyway, chemical pump for soft washing. I'm not gonna get into a whole rabbit hole of soft washing, but I will say if there's a spectrum, right? There's a chemical, there's like a garden pump style thing where you are pretty limited in how and how uh, quickly you can apply chemicals. Then you have this, this is in the middle, and then you have downstreaming with pressure washers, which is like, you know, it's a bazooka. But, you know, the downside on the pump, the pump sprayer is that, you know, low capacity, hard to hit heights. On the downside on the pressure washer is that you have to have a running pressure washer. And, you know, if you're not really, really well, well equipped for that, um, it just feels like overkill to me or felt like it. And I was also burning through downstream valves, could not find one that wouldn't crap the bed almost immediately. So I decided I want a middle ground solution. This is it. This is an on-demand electric pump, meaning it is pumping and it's plugged in. Uh, a lot of people will attach these to 12 volt batteries. I was just snaking an extension cord to the side of the house that I wasn't washing and that worked perfectly fine, but you know, there's a time and place for a, a 12 volt battery as well. Um, this and most of the other stuff in this table that I'm gonna show you, walk you through, is from a website called Pressure Check. I have no affiliation with them, but I love them. Quick shipping, great resources, um, really great customer service, so I highly vouch for them. Um, but yeah, this is the, the basis of this whole thing is this chemical pump. Again, electric. So everything else that I show you, I'm just gonna, um, we will have a document of some sort down in the show notes and likely also some writing on the screen with exact like threading specifications. I'm just gonna call these adapters and describe them in general and the specifics will be available to you if you want them. But I'm not gonna go down a nerdy rabbit hole because I will for sure forget stuff while I'm trying to talk. Um, so I'm gonna focus on what connects to what and you can piece together the details later using the other resources we give you. So let's start at this end where the chemical comes out. This is a J-Rod. There are different orifice sizes. They're meant for different spray patterns to hit different heights of the house or not. This connects to an adapter. That's the coupler that gets the J-Rod in there. that is threaded into the end of the gun, okay? This is a basic gun. You can also have extensions on these that almost any pressure washing uh, gear sight sells. Come down to the other end, we need another adapter here. So that screws into the threading in the bottom of the gun and pops out a barbed end. And we put the barbed end in our tube. I've been running 50 feet of tube. You could go a little uh, longer most likely. I felt like 50 was reasonable to ask this pump to to press uh, to, to push uh, chemical through and fluid through. Feels like if you were gonna try to do 100 or 150 feet, this might be a little underpowered, but that's just a hunch. One thing I implore you to do if you build this system is grab hose clamps and make sure things get nice and tight. Because when I was playing with this thing with water, when I first built it, I was just spraying the side of my house with water. So much pressure, this thing popped off. Back pressure. Because when you are not spraying, this thing is still applying some pressure. Like it stops running when this isn't triggered, but there's pressure here. So imagine if you had stripper or brighten or acid, something caustic in here. You do not want that. So just ratchet the shit out of that down. 50 feet of hose comes up all the way over here. So this is the 
outtake valve. Is that the outtake? There's the intake and the outtake? Outlet. There it is. So as you can see, this goes on a barbed end. This is the exact piece threaded into here. There is Teflon tape inside that connection. I do not over crank this. Not at all, because if you break this housing, you're SOL. I guess you could do a straight out here, but I knew this setup was always going to be on a table like this, and I just wanted to shoot that off the end, so I liked that. Whenever you buy a small plastic part that costs 70 something cents, buy five of them, because they will break and you will lose them, and why be on a job site without re redundancies when they're that cheap? Now we go out the other side. We're doing this in reverse order. I keep... This is three quarters inch hose, right? This is half inch. Uh, I think I built it that way because if I recall, all the other pressure washer guys have the intake a little wider than the rest of it. Um, just for some fluid dynamics reasons, it kind of makes sense intuitively and everyone does it. So this piece threads in this way, barbs out this way, Teflon here. What I did because this was really hard, the barbs were really hard to get in here I actually had to, had to heat this up and expand it a little bit and jam it in. So I decided to hose clamp the shit out of this guy so that this is just the thing that goes into the chem bucket. So all I do when I plug this in is it's kind of awkward at first, but you thread it and that's that. It goes into a bucket of chems. So when we're doing a house wash, basically we have all this connected up here and then several buckets prepped one person's just the bucket person maintaining levels yelling to the the applicator who's you know half a house away when there's going to be a switch um, when we want to go to water maybe because there's always some some water here if we just want to do a quick rinse and some windows um so yeah this thing is ultra efficient it is super fast you can saturate uh at large deck sides of a house to even three stories with gables very, very quickly. So this paired with, you know, a pressure washer ready to go with some sort of a high volume, low pressure wa uh, rinse nozzle is I think an amazing combination. And in some situations, like there are, there are rural properties in Vermont where I am, where the, the well doesn't pump four gallons per minute and you need a solution that can flow a high volume of water to low pressure over and we have used this as the actual rinse as well as the chemical applicator. Now, it takes some soft bristle agitating and a little more rinsing, a little more time, but in, you know, if you compare that to a bad wash with a garden hose or blowing out a well with a pressure washer drawing too much, like I'm gonna spend an extra hour on a house wash with this thing and it's gonna be just fine. So all things considered, like this thing was a couple hundred bucks, super easy to build, and what it opens up to you in the soft wash realm is really, really incredible. This is this is probably one of the, the most powerful pieces of technology uh, I have in the business in terms of it just opening up a lot of doors and increasing workflow and, and just overall capacity. So can't say enough about this entire setup. Like I said, uh, you will have access to just all the information, all the parts and item numbers and all the threading half inch to three quarters to bar to this and that. Um, so yeah, that's how to build it. That's the walkthrough. And if you build this, please share in your stories. Like I want to see, I want to see your creations because this is just one way to do it. There's a million other iterations of the same thing, but yeah, show me what you're washing and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, DM me at advice from a young tradesman on Instagram, comment below, subscribe, like all that stuff, share it. See you next time. Always bottom up. Super easy, right? And I just also want to show you how high this thing can go. This is the most, this is the nozzle that's supposed to shoot to the top of the house. And no problem. That could go another story almost. And if it had any trouble, you could just get a little extra reach on a ladder. And I also have an extension lance for this.